Look at this beautiful planet. This is uh, Pluto, uh, a planet. Um, or it was a planet until uh, 2006, when the International Astronom Astronomical Union redefined the term planet. It had been a planet since 1930, when it was discovered. Um, so at least in our understanding, since that's when we, when we discovered it in 1930, but of course it's been an object that has been orbiting the sun for billions of years. Now Pluto is a dwarf planet, still orbiting the sun. Pluto has been in the back of my mind for the past 40 days or so, when uh, uh, Christopher Gansing, professor in uh, artistic uh, uh, research, and the former head of Transmediale spoke at another event of ours, uh, and he talked about how they themed one of their festivals, BWPWAP, uh, back when Pluto was a planet. <laughs> and it has stuck with me because, you know, we all grew up learning that Pluto is a planet, and back when Pluto was a planet stands as a good reminder for the changing nature of how we perceive the world and our perception, perception of the world that we live in. Uh, my name is Martin. Uh, I work at the Media Evolution. We are one of the organizers uh, of uh, this event, uh, and I will do my best to lead you through the evening. Um, and I want to start by showing you my favorite natural phenomena, um, the mystically beautiful mirage. So this is an optical phenomena in which light rays bend to produce a displaced image of a distant object or the sky. In Swedish, mirage is hagring. But, the, but mirage is French and originates from the Latin mirar, meaning to look at, to wonder at. Again, a sort of a picturesque circumstance in our world provoking questions about what is real. And so reality seems to be an ongoing negotiation in which words, metaphors, points of time, points of views, and belief systems really matter. Um, and in which we as species shape society through art, scientific discoveries, political debate, storytelling, and so on. Because we are sensitive species, we sense. Um, and at our best, we are skeptical, critical, inclusive, and add layers of complexity in our thinking. Because what we sense triggers us to think. And we try to make sense of what we sense. But what should we think? What should one think? This, to me, really is bloody hard. <laughs> It is bloody hard to make an argument. It is bloody hard to make an argument that has some sort of like direction and, and sort of makes sense, you know? Um, and the uncanny valley is this phrase used to describe when something is man-made that tries to mimic something from the real world, um, but doesn't really make it all the way. It builds on Sigmund Freud's concept of the unheimlich, and um, this, is, this is a concept that sort of when when an experience is a little bit creepy and eerie and still familiar in a way. And sometimes I wonder if being alive isn't just one long, uncanny valley experience. Ladies and gentlemen, we are floating in space. But although life is seemingly boundaryless, at a planetary scale, there are boundaries for how much externalities of human activity that the Earth's ecosystems can handle. And as described by Stockholm Resilience Center and Professor Johan Rockström, who gave a lecture in what could be seen as a series 
uh, an event, a part of this second part of the series, um, in the spring, where they, where, where they state that there are nine planetary boundaries, ranging from chemical pollution and the release of novel entities to ocean acidification and climate change. And the intention of creating this framework of boundaries is to measure, visualize, and keep track of how our actions impact our planet so that humanity can, quote, continue to develop and thrive for generations to come. And this leads us to the topic of this evening, planetary intelligence, uh, and the question of how we can become better stewards of our planet with the help of artificial intelligence or not. Uh, in a little bit, I'm going to leave the stage to the artist, technologist, and writer James Bridal, who most of you are here for. And they will give a talk, after which we will welcome Anja Obminska to the stage. She's a science writer at Südsvenskan, and they will have a conversation which will include you at some point. But first, I just want to acknowledge the fact that uh, we are 350 humans in this room, and you know, we've chosen to be here tonight, which is a little weird, I think. Uh, and we'll be spending some 42,000 minutes collectively together tonight. And we, Media Evolution, believe in conversations, interactions between people, disciplines, and experience. And we believe that's how humans, organizations, and society develop. Um, so we're super thankful for you being here. So thank you very much for coming tonight. And thankfully, we're not the only organization or only people that believes in conversation. We are organizing this lecture and conversation together with Südsvenskan, Malmö Live Concert Hall, and Nordic Council of Ministers. Um, because tonight's event is a part of their Nordic Talks series. And they sent us a postcard that should have sound. Let's see if I can play it from the beginning. No? James? <laughs> it's just music. Let's see it again. <laughs> 